Hey everyone, welcome to the video on calculations involving the dissociation constants of acids and bases, Ka and Kb. So we'll dive right into the Ka questions. The dissociation for ascorbic acid, which is a weak acid, is represented by the following equation. And as you can see, for a weak acid, we have a reversible reaction that reaches an equilibrium. The equilibrium constant, which is Ka, is 7.9 times 10 to the minus 5. Calculate the concentration of hydrogen ions at equilibrium for 0.1 mole per litre solution of ascorbic acid. To start the question, it's quite beneficial to write the expression for the Ka constant. So this will be the hydrogen ion concentration as well as the conjugate base concentration divided by the weak acid concentration, so that's ascorbic acid. And it's important to remember that these concentrations are not our initial concentration, but the concentrations of these substances at the equilibrium. Since we don't have these concentrations at equilibrium, we need to construct an ice table to determine the concentrations. The initial concentration of ascorbic acid is 0.1 mole per litre, while the concentrations of the ions are both zero at the very beginning. Now, as the ascorbic acid dissociates, a small amount of the ascorbic acid will become the ions. So the concentration of ascorbic acid decreases by x, while the ions will increase by the same amount because they're in a one-to-one -one stoichiometric ratio. The reason why we know there's only a small amount of the ascorbic acid dissociating to form the ions is because the equilibrium constant is a very small number. And this suggests that when the reaction reaches equilibrium, by combining the initial and the change in concentration, the equilibrium concentration of ascorbic acid is 0.1 minus x, while the concentrations of these two ions are both x. I can then substitute these expressions into my Ka constant, which is 7.9 times 10 to minus 5. So this equals to x squared over 0.1 minus x. After this step, we can go ahead and use a quadratic formula to solve for the value of x. What we can also do is make a simplified assumption to avoid using the quadratic formula. And the assumption here is that since Ka is a small number, the value of x is also small. Remember that x represents the proportion or the concentration of the original acid that ends up dissociating to form the ions. If the equilibrium constant of the dissociation is small, then the amount of acid that undergoes the dissociation is relatively small as well. This allows us to simplify the Ka expression into x squared divided by 0.1. By removing the x in the denominator, I can then times 0.1 on both sides to get x squared is equal to 0.1 times by 7.9 times 10 to minus 5. Since x represents the concentration of hydrogen ions at equilibrium, this will be equal to the square roots of 0.1 times 7.9 times 10 to minus 5. And this gives me 2.81 times 10 to minus 3 mole per litre. As the final answer, I'll leave it as 2.8 times 10 to minus 3 as the k constant is in two significant figures. Let's take a look at, at a different calculation question where we're given the concentration of hydrogen ions but we have to calculate the Ka value for weak acid. So we have a 0 0.2 mole per litre solution of propanoic acid. Again, this is an example of weak acid. If the concentration of the hydrogen ions at equilibrium is 1.32 times 10 to minus 5 mole per litre. Whenever you can, it's a good idea to write a chemical equation to represent the dissociation process of the weak acid. So this is when one of the hydrogen ions in the acid leaves the acid molecule, leaving behind a negatively charged molecule. And this is what we call the conjugate base. Like the previous question, to determine the Ka constant, we need to first determine the concentrations of the ions and the acid at equilibrium. So we can do this by applying an ice table. The initial concentration of the acid is given as 0.200 mole per litre. And again, in this case, at the very beginning, before the acid dissociates, the concentrations of the ions, which are the products, are both zero respectively. 
And over time, as the system approaches equilibrium, the concentration of the acid decreases by X amount, while the ions will both increase by X amount as they're in a one-to-one -one reaction ratio. Now for this question, we are given that the hydrogen ion concentration is 1.32 times 10 to minus 5. So this is the concentration of H plus ions at equilibrium. As we just discussed, since the concentration of the negatively charged conjugate base will be the same as the H plus ion, the concentration for this molecule will be also 1.32 times 10 to minus 5 mol per liter. And you can see that because we started with zero concentration, so zero amounts of the ions, and at the very end at equilibrium, we've gained this much. This tells us that the value of x is 1.32 times 10 to minus 5. Using this information, we can then calculate the concentration of the acid at equilibrium by subtracting 1.32 times 10 to minus 5 from the original concentration of the acid, which is 0.2 mol per liter. And now you can see I've completed my ice table as I've determined the concentrations of all the three substances I need to calculate the Ka constant. So to calculate the equilibrium constant Ka, this will be the concentration of H plus ion and the concentration of the conjugate base. So this is when the acid loses a proton divided by the concentration of propanoic acid, which is a reactant of the dissociation reaction. So then we can use our result from the ice table. Concentrations of the H plus ion and the conjugate base are both 1.32 times 10 to minus 5, and then we will divide it by the equilibrium concentration of the acid, which is the initial concentration, 0.2, minus 1.32 times 10 to minus 5. Okay, and this gives me 8.71 times 10 to minus 10. And I'll leave this as three significant figures. Okay, what about the ionization of a weak base? A very important difference between the ionization or dissociation of a base versus an acid is that a weak base produces hydroxyl ions as opposed to hydrogen or hydronium ions. Similarity-wise, a weak base's ionization or dissociation also reaches an equilibrium as it is a reversible reaction. So we can also characterize the equilibrium by looking at the equilibrium constant, which is Kb, of the reaction. So in this case, for this weak base, hydroxyamine, this will be 9.1 times 10 to minus 9. Calculate the concentration of hydroxyl ions at equilibrium for 0.5 molecular solution of hydroxyamine. So again, to calculate the hydroxyl concentration, we need to remind ourselves what we need to have in the Kb expression. So this will be the hydroxide ion concentration times by the conjugate acid concentration, so that's NH3OH+, divided by, in this case, just the weak base concentration. So it will be NH2OH. Remember that we don't include the amount of water in the equilibrium constant because the concentration of water remains relatively constant as the reaction proceeds. Since we don't have the concentrations of these ions and the acid at equilibrium, we need to construct an ice table. The initial concentration of the base is 0.5 mol per liter, while the ions are both zero at the beginning. As the base dissociates, it decreases its concentration by X amount, while the ions will increase by X amount. Again, this is because the reaction ratios between all of these substances in the reaction are all 1 to 1. So this gives me 0.5 minus X for the equilibrium concentration of the base, and X for both the concentrations of the products at equilibrium. We can then substitute these numbers into the Kb expression, which will get x squared divided by 0.5 minus x. Now remember, after this step, we can make a simplifying assumption to remove the x in the denominator so that we don't have to apply the quadratic formula. And the assumption here is that since the equilibrium constant Kb is small, we know that this ionization reaction happens to a very small degree. So that means it doesn't produce as many ions when it reaches equilibrium. 
So that means x is also a small value or small number. We can then use this assumption to simplify the expression where we just get x squared divided by 0 0.5. By rearranging this, we can calculate x, which is also the hydroxide concentration, and that is 6.7 times 10 to minus 5 mole per liter. And this will be in two significant figures.